Hello everyone, Kevin Remdy here, IT Pro Evangelist with Microsoft, and today I want to talk to you about System Center 2012, and in particular, the Unified Installer. Now the reason I want to talk about the Unified Installer is because it's a really useful tool. Some of you may have seen it if you've downloaded the release candidate for System Center 2012. It's part of that package that gets downloaded now. And the idea behind the Unified Installer is people wanted a way to install many of the components, perhaps all of the components of System Center 2012, uh, Configuration Manager, Operations Manager, Virtual Machine Manager, and so on, all in one fell swoop, right? So that's what this tool does. It's a really great way to build your test environment for the sake of your own trial, your own testing, your own learning of the product. And what I wanted to do, because it's a little bit tricky to get this tool to work properly, it's a, it's a very early pre-beta release. It's not ready for prime time. And in fact, it's not really intended for production use. It's really intended just for the sake of quickly building a test environment. But I wanted to talk to you because it's a little bit complex. You need to understand what needs to be downloaded, what needs to be unpacked, and how it needs to be put on a file location so that the installer can actually take advantage of it. We need to do some prepping of the machines, which I'll talk about in part two. What were the destination for those different components? What do we need to do to those? And then finally, the installation itself, running through that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create three parts of this screencast series, part one being today, where we talk about the components that are required, the prerequisites, and then how we download and unpack those to get ready for the installation. So I'm jumping right into some links here that are pretty important. The first of which, of course, is being able to download the product itself. And I have a really easy to remember aka.ms link, aka.ms slash pvtcld, which stands for, you guessed it, private cloud. Because when I click on that, you'll see the page actually calls this the private cloud evaluation software. So I'm going to go ahead and do that download. We'll get that started. And um, I'll have to log in with a live ID, of course. So we'll get signed in here. Now, if you haven't downloaded this before, you may be prompted for some additional questions at this point, and you can go ahead and do those, and then it'll bring you to the private cloud evaluation download. Now, notice also we give you the opportunity to download Windows Server as well. So if you haven't already installed your virtual machines or your physical machines, if you decide to do that, um, in order to deploy the different components, uh, here's a good way to get an evaluation copy of the foundational operating system. So I'm going to click Download Now. And it's going to load a tool for me called the Download Manager. Now, the Download Manager, if you haven't installed it before, it's going to prompt you for that. So you will have to install this control in order to complete this. Uh, once you have that installed, you'll be prompted to choose a folder in which to download the components. So I'm going to choose a folder that I've created. Uh, this folder I'm calling SC2012. Um, currently empty, and it's empty except for a number of folders. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But we'll go ahead and use that as the location for our download. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and let that download here. We'll just minimize this. And that brings me then to that file location. So here it is. Now, what I have here is a number of folders that I've created as this is downloading here. I've created empty folders for holding the contents of these downloads. These are all packaged, compressed. Um, some of them are executable. Some of them are zip files. One of them actually requires a command line in order to extract the contents. But in e each of these cases, uh, with absolutely no consistency whatsoever uh, among them, uh, you do need to extract the contents of these files in order to then put them in a folder that can be pointed to by the Unified Installer. So when we run the Unified Installer, we'll point to the different location for Data Protection Manager, for Orchestrator, and so on. And um, it's sometimes it's easy. Sometimes like this executable here for the Unified Installer. You know, it's a very small download. That one's already completed. So I can actually just double click on that. It'll ask me for a location. And I happen to have a created also a folder for the Unified Installer. Hit Extract. And it very quickly does that. So now we have the contents of the Unified Installer. So when it's time to run that in part three, I'll actually run this executable right here. Uh, another one that's that's more tricky, and most of these are like that, but the other one that's really tricky that you need to know about is App Controller. Um, it doesn't simply extract from the executable like the others do. Uh, in this case, you actually need to know a command line in order to copy the contents of this file into the App Controller folder that I've created. And so I'm actually going to show you on a command line, here's what the command looks like. It's App Controller, it's the executable here, uh, slash x for extract, and then the destination location. Okay, so slash x, colon, and then your full path to where you want the files to go. Happens very quickly. And now if I look in the App Controller folder, I should see the contents there. 
So fairly straightforward once you know what to do. And that's why I wanted to tell you because it's not, not readily available. I'm sure you could have binged it and found the answer, but I wanted to give it to you here. Now, you notice I also created a folder called prereqs. Now that's also the other important part of this download. You not only have to have the components, but there's a number of prerequisites that you need to have and you need to put them in a folder that can then again be pointed to by the unified installer when you're using the unified installer to do the installation because it will actually do the preparation for you. If SQL Server is needed, and in fact on every component it is needed, it will install SQL Server. It will install the service pack of SQL Server. It will install, if it's required, the .NET Framework 4.0. It will install, if required, some of the, some of the SQL Server runtime commands. Uh, command line utilities and so on. So we want to make sure we have all those ahead of time so that the unified installer knows where to find them. And that brings me to our other link on this page. And this link is to a page on TechNet that you will want to familiarize yourself with because it's the user guide for the unified installer. This is where you can find all this information about what's required. What are the system requirements? What are the, uh, the known issues? And in fact, here on the system requirements, very important information such as the hardware requ that's required for this, the software requirements. And very importantly, here's the prerequisites. So based on this column here, the component that's that you're going to be installing, and in my case, I'm going to install all of them, but if you're choosing just to install, for example, DPM, then you know you're going to need .NET Framework and you won't need the automated installation kit. Um, most of these are fairly straightforward also. You click on the link and it'll bring you to the page where you can do the download. And it's simply an executable that, in my case, I would put it in that prereqs folder. And uh, again, the unified installer, when I'm running it and it says it asks me what the path to the .NET Framework 4 is, I'll point to the prereqs folder. Other cases are not so straightforward. For example, the Windows Automated Installation Kit. If I was installing um, VMM or App Controller, and by the way, App Controller, this asterisk right here, actually mean, is telling me that uh, App Controller requires VMM to be installed somewhere. So if I'm going to do App Controller, I need to have VMM. Um, I will need the Automated Installation Kit, which downloads as an ISO file. So it's a disk image. What I need to do with that one is I actually need to get the contents of the image out. So I need to use some utility that can mount in the ISO file, copy the contents of that into a folder, and then in that that's that folder that I would point to in the unified installer. Again, many of them are, are simple, some of them not, not quite as much. For example, the trial version of SQL Server, if you want to use their trial version, this downloads as an executable. Um, so I have to actually run the executable in order to extract the contents into a folder prior to then using the unified installer to point to the installation location. Here's one of the more tricky ones as well, the cumulative update package for, for SQL Server. This actually is a hotfix. So it'll actually mean that you need to view and then request the downloads. So this will allow you to fill in a form, you'll give it an email address, you'll choose the updates you want to download. It will send you an email. It, the email will contain links and then those links which is what you click on to download those particular pieces. And then once they're downloaded you would then extract the contents of those as well. So it's not quite as straightforward as some of the others. And a couple of additional ones. So let me show you what uh, what the completed version looks like. I have another folder here done. So here's my downloaded components. Here's my prerequisites folder. Here's some of those that were extracted into here. And then some of the other ones that had content that needed to be put into a separate folder, such as SQL Server. So here's my installation of SQL Server. Here's that cumulative update pa uh, package. And as I said, there were, fi there were four uh, pieces. I just extracted them and put them in the three that I don't need. I put them in a temp folder um, just to kind of get them out of the way. Here's the one that's really important for this installation. And then finally, the Windows Automated Installation Kit. So again, even if you may have wanted to install the .NET Framework 4 on your virtual machines prior to doing this installation, that's okay. You can actually do that. Uh, the tool is actually pretty smart with regard to the .NET Framework to see, oh, that's already installed. Well, we'll just go ahead and skip over that. It might save you a little time during the actual running of the unified installer. Um, but, you know, it's... It's still good to let, and even if you do that, though, I should point out, even if you do that, the unified installer will still require, because it's not going to check ahead of time, it will still require you to point to this path, and it will need to find this file before it continues. So having, that's that, that really kind of uh, stressing the fact that it's very important that everything be where you say it is, because you will not be able to continue and actually launch the installation until everything's in place. That's why this is so important. 
All right, so our downloads continuing. We'll go ahead and let that complete and leave you with a couple of additional resources as we wrap up part one here. Um, do check out the page where this video is found. I will put all these links there as well as those links from the previous slide and the uh, all-important download of the private cloud tools. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful, and we'll see you on part two. Have a great day.